Welcome to Exo Magic Trick 415. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College Website link and you can download the workbook. Exo Magic Trick 415 to 422. Hey, in this trick here, we have a uh, survey from a psychological class, and you got to fill in for each question an X. So if we're answering this survey and we're putting in our X's, our goal is then to have a score over here. Well, for this column, the score is 4 For if they answer question number 1 in that column. If they answer question number 2 in this column with an X here, then they need to get that 2 and come over and put a 2 here. So we get 4 and then 2, and then we need a total at the bottom. Now, before we do this, let's limit what you can put in here. So I'm going to um, use data, validation, list, highlight all the cells in the active cell up in the corner. I want to tell all these cells, hey, please, have a drop down list and only allow this X. So there's the active cell. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt D L. Data validation is under data, ribbon, or menu. What do we want? Settings. We want to allow a list. And then what is our source? Hey, this right here. That's it. Click OK. So now we have a drop down. So as we go through and uh, answer this, we can. Uh, uh, use that drop down. I'm just going to fill these in so we have this. Oops. Now we also could do get tricky and add some uh, conditional formatting so every time they added a an X it turned to color. Same thing. Highlight the range in the active cell. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt O D. By the way, both of the keyboard shortcuts I just showed you work in all versions. I'm going to click New Rule, Use Formula, and here I'm going to say hey this cell, remember the active cell is the one you got to click on, and I will need a relative cell reference so in memory it gets copied down and over, so I'm going to hit the F4 key three times, that's a relative cell reference, and we're going to say that's equal to this, and that's locked. Uh, by the way, we're linking conditional formatting data, um, and data validation to the cell, so you could easily change the character. By the way, you don't want to use characters like asterisks or anything like that because asterisks is a, a wild card. So there it is. That's a true-false formula. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to add some fill, whatever fill we want. Uh, red font color, a light font color. Click OK, click OK, click OK. So now we have uh, the setup we want. We'll answer this one over here and this one right here. So we have our survey filled up. Now how in the world do we get a score here? Well we're going to use um, the sum and the if. We're going to say if and we're going to have the formula look through all this range. If any of these cells are equal to x then go up and get the corresponding number and dump it in the cell. Now let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Equals sum and then inside the if, uh, inside the sum, we're going to use an if. It needs a logical test, and then we need to say what to put in the cell. Now, what's our logical test? It's going to be a relative cell reference, the uh, five cells to our left. Anytime that's equal to, and now we want to go up and get our x. Remember, this is the third time we're linking our formulas to this cell. If we change that cell, then all of the uh, formulas will automatically update. When we copy this down, we need it locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key twice to lock it in front of the number reference. So when we copy down across the numbers, it's locked. That is the true-false test. And by the way, we're going to get a true, false, 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 false. Here we would get a false, false, true, false, false, comma, and the value of true. Well, same thing, except for relative cell references here. We want these up here, and these need to be locked. So I'll hit the F4 key twice. That's it. We don't need to put anything for false, because it'll just put the word false, and some function will ignore that. So I'm closing parentheses on the if. And notice the screen tip is polite. I close parentheses on that, and Control shift enter Oh, wait a second. What if I just hit Enter? Value error. This is an array formula. Since the if function is expecting a single logical test, and we're giving it a bunch of trues and falses, you have to hold Control shift and tap Enter. You're telling Excel this is an array formula. And now I can copy this down. Copy this down to there. And then I can come here and use the sum function, Alt equals. It guessed right, so I'm going to hit Enter. Now, let's check this last formula and see if we got it right. I'm going to click here and hit F2. 
Notice the blue one is relative cell re references just fine and the purple one is up there and the green one is still locked up there. So uh, there we have it. I'm going to click escape. Ah, but wait a second. What if we go like this? Someone accidentally fills out the survey incorrectly and there's two. Now, the conditional formatting helps us. We should immediately say, oh, there's two reds. Forget it. But we want something in our formula over here to uh, tell us, uh, forget it. That's not going to work. You need to adjust this particular question. So I'm going to come up to the first cell, hit F2, and how about what's the condition we're going to get when we need an error, uh, some sort of message? The X is there's two of them. Well, the way you count text or non-empty cells is with the COUNTA function. So I'm going to come here and say IF, and I'm going to use the COUNTA, COUNTA, and I'm going to highlight the same relative cell references we did for our other IF, and let's see if I can uh, Come over here and make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so count up, close parentheses. If what? This is a logical test right here. This is our second if we're adding here. Logical test, that is greater than one. So anytime we have a count of the x's that's greater than one, the comma and the value we want to display is in quotes too many entries. Now if you're a bad speller like me, double quote and then a comma. If you're a bad speller, you better spell check in edit mode because once you enter this formula in, spell check won't uh, catch the text in formulas. I'm going to hit F7 to make sure. I'm going to say ignore. Okay. Now, we have our formula and let's see, we need, we just added an if to the beginning. By the way, that's the whole first formula we put in that worked just fine when we didn't have two x's, but that's the thing that's going to come up if value is false, which means there's less than, or there's one or fewer. So what do we want? We have to close off this if by, um, in, with that false value we've already entered there with a close parenthesis. I see that the parenthesis is black, so I know I'm done. Control shift and enter. I'm going to click and drag it down. So now we have what we want. Uh, we have our formula, and this one has too many entries, so we come over and once we delete this, then we see it comes back to normal. So that's if uh, th this method will work for this particular template, but I got to show you there's a much better way to do this. Now, some people need this template, that's the way they want to do it. But forget it, if you're not absolutely 100% required to do it in this form, much easier way to do it. Here's another little uh, question answer form, and we have our uh, five answers and our uh, point values here. How about we just do data validation? Here's question one, two, three, four. You'd want the, the text of the question typed out here probably. But let's do data validation drop down list. Active cell at the top, Alt D L, tab L, tab. So it says list, source, and I'm just going to highlight that range right there of just the words. Oops, I missed it. Broop and then click OK. So now we have our uh, not at all like me. So th that's maybe even better than an X, right? So let's say I'm going to select this one. I'm going to in the active cell hit F2 and then Control Enter just so I get a bunch of things here. And then it's a simple matter of we'll use a lookup function. Highlight uh, this cell right here equals V lookup equals V lookup and the lookup value is this because we need to go over to that table and say hey V lookup take this comma in memory and then the table that's going to be this right here the values we're looking up are always in the first column the numbers we want to return can be in the second third fourth or whatever we only have a second column here those are the values we want to return now when we copy this V lookup down that needs to be relative and this needs to be absolute so I'm going to hit the F4 key comma, the column index, that's one, two, two, col the second column is the item we want to return to the cell, so I have to put a two there to tell the VLOOKUP to always retrieve something from the second column, comma, the final argument is, if I scroll over here, tr approximate match or exact, we must do it exact unless the list is sorted alphabetically, which it's not, so I'm going to put zero, which means this value will, it'll look that up the exact uh, version of that in the lookup table. Close parentheses and then control enter. So now we copy this down 
and uh, alt equals. And there we have our answers. If we change this to uh, neither uh, like me nor unlike me, very much like me, et cetera, I get exactly my score. So there you have it. There's the VLOOKUP with a uh, simplified version. And then this one, if you ha absolutely have to keep this particular form, uh, that will work right there. All right, we'll see you next trick.